And that does put you in the minority. Based on a recent study by the American Patriot Guild, 99.9% of all Americans had a joyful holiday season this year. They sat with their families and expressed love for each other. They sang Christmas carols together. They opened beautiful, thoughtful presents and spent a long time with each gift, looking down at the gift, looking up at the gift giver, looking the gift giver in the eyes, smiling, bowing, thanking, expressing gratitude and love, and always saying, this present is wonderful, but you mean so much more to me. Over 99.9% of American families spent the last few days in a state of pure, blissful, nirvanic love. Joy rang through the hills. Feelings of such sweet lightness filled every single American, except maybe you if you didn't have a great holiday season, with such buoyant and magical love that many people achieved the state known as samadhi. They actually transcended their physical bodies and merged with the cosmos, filling the entire universe up with their radiant love, blasting out of their heart chakras like nuclear energy flying out of the Fukushima reactors after that Japanese earthquake. I'm sorry, I'm being sarcastic. Look, a lot of us had shitty holidays, you know? I'm, I, I, I had an okay holiday. I spent it by myself. And as inviting as that might sound to some of you who feel like you just spent a weekend hanging out in a putrefying elephant carcass with a family of hyenas, it actually, you know, you're still, you can't really escape the holidays, no matter, no matter what you do, whether you're with a family or not with a family, whether you're with a group of people or by yourself, it, there's just this, this feeling of being like a foie gras goose with getting festivity jammed down your throat by some kind of decentralized dark energetic system parading as the opposite of what it actually is. So there's a real weird weirdness that comes over a lot of us during the holidays. And you might be one of them. I don't know. Maybe you're a new parent and you, you actually enjoyed it. So forgive me. I don't want to sound jaded. I don't feel jaded. I just don't like holidays. <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't like enforced celebration. Like, I, I like when celebration kind of happens naturally, where you're walking down the street on some random day, and you see some beautiful flower, and you think, wow, man, what an incredible flower that is, and your heart lifts up, and, and you realize, whoa, what a great life this is, but it kind of happens random. I don't like the enforced holidays, but that's probably more of an indication of my own blocks, you know? Regardless... If you had a bumpy holiday season, I know a lot of you did, this episode is going to be a real palate cleanser for you. This, this is my favorite way for podcasts to happen, which is just the universe sort of gives them to you. It just They appear in front of you like an angel, and that's exactly what happened. I'm hanging out at my friend Doug's house, and he texted me and said that his friend was in town with a musician named Laraji, who at the time I had not heard of. So I looked him up and started listening to his music, and he's incredible. He was discovered by Brian Eno in a park. And so I told Doug, yeah, let's set this thing up. And then within a day, I'm sitting across from Laraji, who emanates a very similar kind of energy that comes from Ram Dass or comes from... Anybody who's got a spiritual practice, it's an enlightening energy, as in it lightens everything up, not just in, internally, not just like you get around these people and internally you feel more buoyant, but literally like colors around them get brighter and the world seems filled with more possibilities and we are reminded of something C.S. Lewis said, which is, the gates of hell are locked from the inside. Meaning, you don't necessarily have to be broiling in that cauldron of succubus diarrhea. You can climb out anytime you want. 
dry yourself off, and walk into the Garden of Eden. We got a great episode for you today, friends. We're going to jump right into it, but first, some quick business. This episode of the DTFH is brought to you by Squarespace.com. Head over to Squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, use the offer code DUNCAN to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. Squarespace, they make it easy for you to make beautiful websites. I just, a few weeks ago, created a Squarespace website. It's the first time I've done it in a while, and if anything, it's gotten easier. I am blown away by how amazing Squarespace is compared to the way it used to be when you wanted to make a website. You would have to either A, achieve about seven pounds of Adderall and blast that into your asshole using some kind of coffee enema, maybe a baby elephant trunk, and then open up these arcane tomes of HTML and then maybe you could cobble together something that sort of looked like a website. Or, God forbid, you would have to go hunt down a web designer. And more than likely, you were going to get hoodwinked by a pirate. Somebody who was going to pull their hand off to reveal it was a prosthetic hand covering up a vicious, razor-sharp prison shank. And they were just going to kind of woodpecker you to death with that awful jagged shank right in your living room. You thought you were going to have a meeting about your website? No, you're about to meet the son of God because you're going to die because you got into business with some Looney Tunes. Well, these days are long gone thanks to Squarespace.com. Now all you got to do is head over to Squarespace, start a free trial, and you can use their award-winning templates to put together an amazing website. Whether you're creating a blog, you have some wonderful thing you want to sell, you want to publish your manifesto, everything you need is over at Squarespace.com. And you get 10% off the purchase of a website or a domain. And friends, I looked up some available domains, and I, I'm kind of blown away. I assumed every single possible combination of words had already been bought. But believe it or not, here's some available domains for you if you decide to make a badass website. Boob.coach is available. Can you believe that? Boob Coach is out there. But we're just getting started. Wombofthegoddess.us is available. That's pretty good if you're starting some kind of like tantric yoga sex service. Wombofthegoddess.us us is there for you. Scalpbugle.com. I know at first you hear Scalp Bugle and you think, I don't know, man, if that's, if that's a website I'd want, but I picture it as a kind of like a incendiary sort of popular culture parody site. Some, something like a cross between the onion and defamer with a little bit of like, hello giggles thrown in there or something, scalpbugle.com. And then this is the one, the, the last two, I can't believe it. I, I am honestly flabbergasted that these two exist. S- doglevitation.com is still available somehow. How is that available? How is doglevitation.com still out there? I'm not going to buy it. I saw it and I thought, you know what? Jump on that. You'll be a millionaire in a couple of weeks. But rather than buy it and profit myself, I'd rather give it to you, my beloved listeners, doglevitation.com. For nine ninety five. you could own the premier website on how to teach your dog to levitate. You tell me that's not going to be a hit. And then finally, this is the one that it seems like it must be a mistake. And the moment I say it, it's going to be gone. I'm sure the first person to listen to this episode is going to hit pause, go to squarespace.com and buy this immediately using offer code Duncan to get 10% off. Get ready, friends. Honestly, this is like, I kind of feel like the way whoever came up with Google probably felt right before they uploaded it. When they're like, oh, you know, people need a way to find stuff on the internet I'm going to call it Google. And I bet whoever thought that, I bet at that moment, time froze. 
a crack in the time space continuum opened up. The flower of life emerged. Weeping Jesuses fell out of the ceiling and they bought Google.com. But in the same way, when I announced this, I'm sorry if it's already gone. You didn't move fast enough. One of you guys is, or gals is going to get this and you're going to, you might, you know what you might as well do before I even say this, you might as well pull up Zillow and look for a million dollar homes and wherever you live, because you're about to buy one of them. Once you hear this domain name that's available, this is truly, truly like me giving away a thousand Bitcoins right now just to get, I should, in a weird way, I want to stop and buy this domain name. I can feel all my greed, all my selfishness inside of me, like coiled nests of poisonous snakes writhing inside of me. I can feel it inside of me. I can feel all the thousands of lifetimes of making selfish decisions, millions of selfish choices, all of them pushing me like some wave right into a beach made out of the bones of the saints where I'm going to get ripped to shreds because of my greed. But I'm going this lifetime, I'm giving this domain name away to one of you lucky sweeties out there. This domain name is available. I already checked. Get ready to go buy asshypnotist.com. Asshypnotist is available right now. Asshypnotist.com. Nobody bought in the in the history of the internet. It did not cross anyone's mind to buy the very important domain name asshypnotist.com. It's there for you right now. All you got to do is go to squarespace.com, enter offer code Duncan, and you will get 10% off of your purchase of a website or the domain asshypnotist.com or any other domain that you can think of. And once you buy it, once you buy scalp, bugle, asshypnotist, doglevitation.com, boob.coach, or wombofthegoddess.us, you can easily assemble a beautiful, award-winning website using Squarespace's incredible templates. Remember, squarespace.com, offer code Duncan, you'll get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. A tremendous thank you to my subscribers over at patreon.com forward slash DTFH. If you want to slide deep into the inner throbbing, pulsating coil of the Duncan Trussell family hour, go no further than patreon.com forward slash DTFH. Sign up for a mere $5 a month, the price of a single fairy wing, you will have access to early editions of the DTFH, commercial-free episodes like this episode, Laraji. There's also another one sitting there with Raghu Marcus. Whenever I record these interviews, I just upload them to Patreon with no commercials, no opening rambles, just the conversations themselves. So you can listen to uh, early releases of the DTFH. Also, there are long, rambling opening monologues not attached to any interviews. So if you want to just hear extra opening rants that didn't make it into the main feed, they're all there for you. Also, music and a lot of other weird stuff. It's where I interact with a lot of the listeners and it's just, it's only the silken inner chamber of my heart. If you want access to that, all you got to do is go to patreon.com forward slash DTFH, and you will become my patron. You will become my master. You will become my mistress. I'll have to do whatever you say. Whatever you want, O oh goddess, O oh God, I am your whimpering, simpering slave. Patreon.com forward slash DTFH. And much thanks to those of you who use our Amazon link. This is a great way for you to support the DTFH. All you got to do is go to DuncanTrussell.com, slide through that link, Buy yourself some kind of musical instrument. You're going to want that after you listen to this episode with Laraji and start making some beautiful music. Just go through the Amazon link. They'll give us a very small percentage of anything you buy, and it will cost you nothing. Finally, we have a shop with T-shirts, 
posters and stickers located at duncantrussell.com. Now, without further ado, today's magical guest has collaborated with Brian Eno. He's produced over 55 albums of beautiful, mystical, life-transforming, ambient music, and he seems to have entered into this dimension from some realm of sacred healing music. Everybody, please welcome the angel currently calling himself Laraji. Laraji. Hello, Duncan. <laughs> Welcome. Thank, Thank you, you so much. This is a miracle that you're here. It's an L.A. trip for me to be here. And to Last minute, and here I am on a podcast interview. Fantastic. It's wild, and I'll tell you, it's the strangest thing, because I think it, it, it's a miracle of miracles, because I've just recently gotten addicted to modular synthesizers. What I just showed you. Yes, and you, for your entire life, have been producing some of the most incredible, ambient, spiritual, channeled music I've ever heard. So the fact that you just randomly are sitting in front of me is a little miraculous to me. Well, I, I will be sitting in front of somebody right now, and why not you? <laughs> <laughs> Brian Eno found you in a park. Yes, he did. And... Uh... Washington Square Park, around 1979, 78, 79, at, uh, playing electric zither through a small amp, sitting in a cross-leg position with my eyes closed, the northeast corner of, Central, of Washington Square Park. That was my favorite performance area. Why? Why that corner? Because there was a cobblestone circle about maybe 15 feet in diameter, with a tree in the center and benches, circle, benches on the peripheral of the circle where people could sit. And so I would set, situate myself in the center of the circle, cross-leg position, my back against a tree, and radiate music there, and people would come and sit down and bliss out or bliss in. I saw pictures of it, and it, it, it does look like people are... It's, it, it looks, it reminds me of pictures I've seen of Prabhupada chanting Hare Krishna in the park where uh -huh. the energy just drew people to him and people were meditating around you in the picture that I saw. Wow. And just vibing out with you. Uh, yes. Uh, that's interesting. I've never saw a picture like that. Well, most of my times my eyes were closed. In fact, they were closed the night that Brian left me a note to contact him which started our collaboration on the ambient Day of Radiance. You were okay. so in a trance when you were making music in the park or whatever, a med meditative yes. state, yes. that you didn't notice that Brian Eno had been watching you for a while probably before he dropped that note. Mm -hmm. No, I don't notice. Uh, I'm aware that people are present when I take a break, I'll just make eye contact with people, but generally my eyes were closed and head bowed, and, and I'm tuned into an, a unified field, a, a cosmically pervasive field. <laughs> uh, and that was experimental too, just to see what would happen if I could drop into trance and operate a musical instrument, you know, and then I learned the performance style of such. You, your nervous system functions differently. You're, you're in trance. And so the music is like a, uh, the electrodes on your body. that it, it, it records or registers where you are. And so the type of music that would evolve out of that kind of performance state was uh, what some people call ambient. Sometimes I just call it field music or vertical sound presence. Mm. Do you consider it a form of channeling? I used to say channeling, and then the period I shied away from it because I didn't think people were getting my idea of channeling, as if you're bringing something from another dimension. 
I believe that uh, in channeling, I use the word running, running energy. You're, you're, okay. running, you're running energy. And you could use the word channeling, but channeling might to some people sound like you're going outside of yourself and coming from a foreign place. Yes. I say running energy, you're running what's already where you are. You just might shift your awareness to realize that instead of just local New York, Manhattan energy, you can shift your awareness to be aware that you're also in a cosmos. You can channel, you can run cosmic energy. I mean, you're aware of a cosmic feel, cosmic time, cosmic space. And running the energy means giving it attention and letting it uh, find expression through your conscious behavior. What is cosmic time versus earth time? Cosmic time, you could call it no time or nonlinear time, the eternal present moment. Cosmic time is the eternal present moment. I would feel that anybody who's dropped into trance or dropped into some good herb <laughs> <laughs> notices that the uh, what they thought were hard, fast boundaries of time, linear time, just they're not there. You see the clock on the wall, you see the calendar on the wall, but your head and your your awareness is buzzing beyond it all. You're in a like a suspended sus- suspended time flow and. C- constant present time this for me is cosmic time that uh everywhere is now now is the uh all-pervading cosmic time linear time is suggested uh mind or reasoning or thinking mind suggests that yesterday i did this tomorrow i'll do that yes. and the line between the two is the the progression of linear time you can call it earth time perhaps if you're on mars or jupiter that kind of experience might flow differently. But beyond or in the midst or before it all is this unified field, this omnipresent nowness. I'm going to call this the universal, universal present time. Whether you choose to call it cosmos or call it the pure I am or just call it now. I see be here now on your uh, computer. Yes. And that was uh, Baba Ram Dass's, uh, uh famous book and the being here now the now is the cosmic time and if you suspend your thinking mind that uh no thought no linear thought you're automatically in present time uh awareness yes do you how often do you stay in that place do you find yourself coming in and out of that or do you i do it's my dominant this is my dominant place. I come in and out of it in order to get the subway <laughs> or to cross the street in New York. Yes. <laughs> but I'm in it most concentratedly. If I, I take time to go into Central Park and grab a nice space and do some conscious Tai Chi Chuan, which is called running cosmic energy or running Chi energy. Oh, Tai Chi. Or backstage before performance, I'll uh, tune in to expand my sense of the deeper, deeper timelessness. What what method do you use to tune in? Uh, several. One is breathing. Uh, say I might do seven, 20 rounds of deep breathing and connected breath. I might do uh, drop my center of awareness down from my head in, through my heart into the tantian just below the navel. Uh, another practice is I'll do some hatha yoga backstage just to uh, move energy and open the breath. Another is the mind science called uh, where you just issue suggestions to yourself. You know, I am not the body. I am not. In other words, to drop out of this over tight identification with your names, titles, and classifications. As a matter of fact, mm. that was a primary one when I started having good success with meditation. So I would sit in an easy chair, do some breathing, and then take off all the titles that are being used or have ever been used for me. <laughs> all of them. I'm cool. not a husband. I'm not a son. I'm not a grandfather. I'm not an American. I'm not a Negro. And just sit with what's left after all the titles are relaxed. And I discovered that anger, um, jealousy, a worry, all of those yummy things don't belong to me. They belong to the titles. Wow, cool. And when I got that awareness... I could sit in that easy chair for five hours and without any anxiety about rushing to do anything or contact anyone or to forgive anybody or to fear anything 
because I was beyond the, the personal linear identity. And I knew I was having success with meditation. I grew up in the Baptist church and read the Bible, but not the Bible. The Bible didn't make clarity, sense to me, until I was having these deep meditative experiences and I could sense that the Bible can be read spiritually, that you must, that I feel you must have a expanded sense of yourself as being spirit. So you read from a spiritual sense of self rather than a physical, mm. carnal sense right. of self. Mm. And so uh, when I was having the deep meditative experience, uh, I started attracting other experiences like uh, hearing cosmic music. And I didn't call it cosmic music. I just knew it's whatever that was, I wanted to do that. And I realized that I couldn't do it because as I went to do research, it's music that has no ending or beginning. It's called the soundless sound. Yeah. Uh, it's all pervasive. And one teacher suggested to me that we don't hear this sound with our ears, eardrums, and we we discern it through our cerebral cortex as a vibration, as a pulsation. And we translate it into music because that's the language we use to say, oh, I'm hearing music. But uh, the music I heard or didn't hear, I'll explain what I'm saying there, that it was all pervasive and it activated it's a dormant cosmic understanding that everything is going on now, everything is simultaneous, and eternity is now. And at during that experience, uh, I think I came close to tears because it was such a deep, ecstatic, blissful, beautiful sense of homecoming. It's like, you know, if you've ever been taken by your parents to visit grand folks you've never seen before. Yes. And you just feel a kindred connection and yes. your heart breaks open. I felt like I was just pulled into this awareness of the whole universe in a in a reunion, an infinite family reunion. Wow. Yes. And it must have lasted about 10 minutes. Now, I talk about it as though it happened. And I catch myself and recall that the teaching in this is that there is no past tense. So it didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> It is happening. And yes. uh, when I come to a place of meditative alignment, I, I rejoin that stream of, of uh, uh, feeling and experience. But even now, I tap into the memory. To, uh, it, 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 it pushes me. It, it compels me to reach for the kind of music I reach for on this side of the veil. Do you, you know, you hear and... Uh, Obviously, you shouldn't take it necessarily literally, but you hear things about, I think it's really quite beautiful, how the angels sing to the creator. And um, sometimes I wonder if that is actually people trying to describe that sound that you're describing, which is we're listening to the infinite sort of awe yes. of sentience. Is it becomes increasingly aware of the profound beauty of the creator. Oh, yes. Um, each individual might he have that experience in the way they can best uh, understand it. In my case, of course, I've been through uh, the College of Fine Arts Music School at Howard University and had a classical background. So this music that I'm talking about, I experienced it as a classical brass orchestra. Wow, okay. Weaving this most glorious textual harmonic feel. Wow. And someone else might hear it as ocean surf or conch shells or a choir of angels uh, or crickets or uh, buzzing of bees. There are basically 10 different ways that an individual can have this experience. And um, I would say that your nervous system is vibrating in an altered way, whether you call it Kundalini is rising up through your, your spine, your nervous system, and causing you to function as a different kind of filter or non-filter for information. Ah, filter, yeah. Not a filter versus antenna. I don't know if there's a difference. Antenna may be called calling, bringing a, a information. Antenna, well, antenna is a use, useful word. You become an antenna. Uh, at the same time, thinking that the you 
we're talking about. There's a you that's infinite and eternal. Then there's a you that's a little human beanie. <laughs> <laughs> so if you think you're a human beanie, then you think of this is all coming out from outside of you. But if you know that the pure I am okay. you, is the stars and the planets and the galaxies yeah. are all unfolding inside of you. I got you. Yeah, that's beautiful. Oh, that's so funny because that's the eternal, one of the eternal psychedelic conversations is is this inside me man like when you try dmt or have like a profound mushroom yeah. trip you think am i seeing something real or is it inside me and what you just said answers the question it's yeah. both it depends on where your head's at and that question is it real well if it isn't real or is real probably doesn't matter anymore if you've taken the experience and done something with it and use it to inspire your art your your words, your lifestyle, right. suddenly you're off and you're just like, is Jesus real? And it doesn't matter if just being exposed to the concept or the idea of a character like that has propelled you to explore deeper into your connection with the Supreme Being. Suddenly, you know, it doesn't matter if that was real or not real. It, you're making it real for yourself. Do you think we live, that this is heaven where we're at right now? I can think that. I can choose to think that. I can choose to forget that. And heavenly alignment. Uh, if your awareness, my awareness, is in heavenly alignment, and my emotional nervous system is in heavenly alignment, that's alignment with the, the infinite, the cosmos, then heaven on earth means I'm bringing timelessness here. I'm not just walking on earth. I'm walking on a cosmic field. And, and I've transformed this local isolated personal experience into a universal all pervasive experience <laughs> yes so we call it holographic i'm i'm here but all of timelessness is here all of my uh all of my relatives are here this is i'm carrying uh, the wholeness to, to walk on heaven on earth is to walk each moment i am in the moment of now and each moment i'm touching the fullness of the feel can you talk to a little bit about the sun? The sun? Yeah. Well, my, my early suspicions is that the earth is encrusted sun, that we are cooled down the sun. The sun is a brilliant being, a, a model of, of selfless service. And my suspicions are that the sun is, is conscious and can respond to an individual's praise of the sun. An acknowledgement of the sun. Cool. Yes. How do you praise the sun? Well, you can uh, not look directly at the sun. You can in the morning or bow toward the sun. Or when you see sunlight, just stop for a moment. Stop being in linear time and just notice, ah, oh, sunlight. Just feel it and own it. Be thankful for it. Uh, do you know how long it takes for a photon to get out of the sun? Have you ever heard this before? Uh, if it's stuck in New York traffic, a while. <laughs> <laughs> but supposedly that's amazing because when we see the sun, it's not where we see it. it it's, in other words, the, the amount of oh. time it takes to travel here. Right. But still, that's a long ways away. Yes. And just think if that implies how far away the sun is, and yet we on this planetary orb travel around the sun yeah that is we'd be traveling yeah yeah where we were when i came into your studio this morning we we're probably maybe millions of miles or thousands of miles away from wow. where we'll be when we finish this podcast yeah wow that's and that's an important thing to remember it's so easy to forget that and 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 ev the photons, I have just read this, and you might find it interesting. The, every photon, every particle of light that's hitting us, apparently, it comes out of the mantle of the sun. And it takes millions of years for it to be born out of the sun. It has to push its way out of the mantle. And then it cuts. So, and our, wow. and our eyes are eating photons, basically. Like a photon lands in our uh -huh. eyes and gets converted into chemical energy, and that's it for the photon. So our eyes are just gobbling up these little sentient beings that took 
millions of years to get born out of the sun, which is to me something that seems really quite beautiful because our eyes are sort of like black holes for these little little light minnows that are sw- yes they're uh that's that's fresh new uh insight for the sun uh i do know that if you close your eyes don't do this with open eyes close your eyes and look up directly into the sun with eyes closed and if you can create a strobos- stroboscopic effect with two of your hands kind of washing against each other yeah <laughs> that uh, I've done this and noticed wonderful images, geometric forms, sometimes a suggestion of another parallel dimensional life uh, situation going on. Do you think, that, do you th- do you think that's, that there is a, a, a potentially a, a, another universe simultaneously overlaying this universe that is populated with uh, entities that we can't see in this dimension? I have no reason to doubt it, and I would believe that... The sun uh, emitting or a certain frequency of sunlights hitting us could trigger dormant hormonal activities that, if activated, could allow us to break through into another dimension of realization. But I accept that there are parallel dimensions intersecting or permeating where we are now, and we could drop into them and drop out of them. I guess sleep is... They say sleep is a heavy-duty drug. Yes. You go sleep. <laughs> the body is a drug, too, I hear. Yeah. But you can shift your awareness of what's going on now. So you go to sleep, you have a dream, and suddenly you're on a boat, on a yacht, and you're drinking your favorite root beer, and a shark comes up and says, Make mine, my little, my little sweetie pie. <laughs> <laughs> the classic. And you wake up really quick. And you Wow. <laughs> But the idea of simultaneous parallel universes, I have no reason to doubt it. Uh, But once again, whatever I think there is, ultimately, it's all going on inside the bigger me, the the pure I am. Right. And I think that's one way to cure stress, paranoia, and fear is to have a practice of diving into and re-identifying with the universal I am. Uh to take the edge off the fears that uh, we are subject to if we just think of ourselves as a limited individual mortal subject to the with the flings and arrows of life, mis- yes. misfortune. A beanie. Mm. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I um, am really interested in your spiritual history because um, it seems like you have had some pretty intense teachings and I, from what I've read online coming from s- gurus. Do you currently have a guru? A uh, guru means, means dispeller of light, a speller of darkness, bringer of light. And I say that I suspect that I have, uh, what do you call it, anonymous gurus right. and mentors that uh, have worked through my dream states and uh, work through seemingly homeless people mumbling something while I'm walking by them on the street. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, dropping deep into um, shamanic trance and having realizations. I mean, one of the most beautiful, I think, guru hit was doing ayahuasca mm. at one session and having this experience of being in an extraterrestrial museum and looking at this jewelry of this glistening, uh, exquisite, uh, geometric jewelry. And it was so beautiful. And at the time, I could make the connection that staring at beauty and drinking in beauty opened my heart. Mm. And that beauty, contemplating beauty, is a way to open the heart and a way to get love energy flowing, to run love energy. Yeah, 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 sure. So that gurus, there was no physical person there doing that to me. And then I've had uh, the pleasure of being in the presence of people that were called gurus. Yes. And uh, I'd be in the presence of people who were calling that person their guru, but I resisted calling anybody outside my physical self my guru. I may say my mentor or a teacher or a model. And the person that came close to being called a guru would say, I'm not your guru. (laughs) (laughs) says, Drop into deep trance and go within. And once you know your inner guru, you'll see the reflections on 
and those out there who are reflecting your inner guru to you. When I'm, I did a years ago, the first time I met Baba Ramdas, because he does these Skype calls, and I couldn't believe that he would do these Skype calls. And I signed up for one, and there he was on my screen, and I was just so shocked. And what I said to him was, uh, "Are you my guru?" <laughs> and he, <laughs> and he responds, he gets this, you know, Ramdas, he gets this beaming smile on his face, and he goes. Sure, I'm your guru. Now what? <laughs> <laughs> well, some people need to say that you're my guru in order to help pull them out of being overexposed to maybe dark, heavy energies in their life. Right. And they need somebody to model the, 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 the positive upward direction. Yes, yes. Mm. Now, but, but you, I, in, many, in many interviews... You, you, when you talk about yourself, it's in, obviously correct me if I'm wrong here. It sounds as though you're implying that you chose this incarnation, or that this is a you. You decided to manifest as this being that you are right now. I have a feeling that there is some intention and some design for my being here in this Earth experience at this time. At uh, times I get glimpses of the fact that my being drawn to music is a carryover from say, a previous or another preparation life stage somewhere. Huh. Um, I was once told by my mentor, who refused to say that he was my guru, say that uh, I'm from Jupiter, and uh, a guru planet. And I didn't know what to make of that at the time, but uh, he just smiled and says, you're from Jupiter. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and, and now we have these beautiful images of Jupiter. Have you seen them? My God, they're just amazing. Like we have these, yeah. it's, in, it's such a living, incredible planet. It's just, you know. Well, you know, as you, we're talking now, I'm getting a realization that my, uh, the music hearing experience I talked about may have been... Uh, the planetary sending me waves of reminder because it woke me up to a music form that was much bigger than I'd ever experienced before. And it, it uh, informs the kind of music I reach for now, which is more vertical music or music to lift consciousness out of over identification with limited life. Mm. Yeah. I want to talk about how you create your music because I, as I'm listening to it, and how and and loving it and experiencing it i keep thinking to myself how much of it is composed beforehand and how much of it is just flowing out of you in that moment and to to add to that question when you what was the process when you were recording with brian eno in studio with your electric zither. Yeah. How organized was the process? Well, I'll tell you, I did go through a period of intense organization, especially in college, and I was composing. That was my, one of my dreams, to become a composer, and I would sit at this large manuscript and write out music next to the piano and hum it, and then I would send them off to the a Library of Congress to be copyrighted. So I went through a period of composition, intentional notes, chords here and there, and not much ever happened to that music. But when I started running energy through sound or channeling music, uh, that music got recorded and got distributed and uh, heard by more people. That music is, comes out of my compositional skills were transformed into not composing notes, but composing tunings for the zither, 36-string zither. So composing modes or scales that have an atmospherical uh, energy, an emotional uh, suggestion. Were you, when you're tuning a 36-string zither, how? Well, I, I, re I read that in an interview. I was just, how are you doing that? Or do you ha did you have something like tuning forks to help At that you? time, uh, there were not guitar tuners. How was I tuning? I think I was tuning it. Maybe there was pitch pipes. Um, ah, okay. But I would... Of the 36 strings, 
typically I would be going for a chord, either pentatonic would be a five note chord, which means out of 36 strings, those 36 strings have to be tuned in such a way that many of the strings are doubled and tripled so that no strings are outside of that five note chord. Sometimes I would tune just a heart feeling. I would just pluck a note on the zither and then feel where the next note would be, and it would be feeling, heart-wise. And if I was, which, which wasn't the case most of the times, be in meditative resonance, the kind of tuning that I would accept as a final uh, composition would, would have juice to it. It would suggest maybe mountains, valleys, or huh. intergalactic star systems. Yeah. Or it would be kind that would allow me to express a sense of simultaneous cultures either around the planet or around the universe that are dancing and celebrating. So the kind of images that I would look for in my tunings would be those that were in harmony with an unspoken consciousness of that you know gets vibrated through meditation. You get uh, a higher sense or a meditative understanding. And so the kind of tunings that I would compose would have a story in them. And then I would then improvise <laughs> through those tunings to wow. release the story and energy. So that way of composing is less rigid. You, you, you select the terrain or the medium, which is a harmonic field. And then you go into it and let it show you where you can go with it. Yeah. So that, like Day of Radiance, I think there were two or three different harmonic fields that I tuned the instrument to on ambient number three, Day of Radiance, and just uh, in the studio, do some breath work and tune in to remind myself of the self beyond the limited self. And when I catch that wind, then inspiration just flows. Yes. You, know, you don't have to know what note you're going to play. You're about sculpting the feel, interacting with this subtle, all-pervading presence. Yes, sculpting the feel. It is like clay or something absolutely man why is it like clay well it's there to be done you do what you want with it you can play with it you can wash your hand through it you can call it chi and infinite and do exercise through it you can um, hug your sweetie pie in the midst of it you can, you can do so much with it <laughs> yeah, and yeah, it's yeah. up to you and if you charge it with positive thinking with positive images then you go higher and higher and deeper. But if you charge it, most times accidentally, with negative thoughts, negative feelings and moods and thought forms, you might take it to denser, heavier. So you can take this field and do what you want with it. Some call it the pure mind. That you can, it can be your imprisonment or it can be your key. Wow. It can be your lock or it can be the key. You can liberate you into higher realms of personal and planetary existence or it can keep you locked up into density and confusion yes and and w i want to ask you what do you think your music is light and it's beautiful and it's 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 liber it's wonderful but and i now i can see why but what do you think about musicians who create beautiful dark music music that is it's like they didn't tune into people celebrating. They tuned into some hell realm and some part of the universe and have decided to bring that vibration That's, into this dimension. That could be their calling, and they can see the beauty in that, and or they see the necessity in that, or it allows them to feel grounded or feel useful, or they're relating to the language that gives them validation. Mm -hmm. And so I, it, not even a tendency to want to, judge them negatively but uh say that i've chosen not to listen to if the music feels dark for me or doesn't represent the meditative resonance in which i'm presently vibing then i can choose to not listen right and if i am radiating light and joy and somebody else says i'm not ready to be there i still need some more anguish and and uh dark feelings to uh, identify with. Yeah. And, they, and so we're both in the same universe and we're choosing to use the universal energy in the way that we think we need to do it. Gotcha. Uh, now, you... Could you t tell the story about the time w when you went to pawn your guitar and bought the zither that we were just talking about? 
Yes, there's a long version. Uh, at that time, I was living in Queens, New York, married at the time. And uh, Queens was near Sri Chinmoy's meditation uh, community. And since I lived that close, I would walk maybe a half an hour and visit the meditations at the time. And he was a music guru, Sri Chinmoy. I don't know if you know of him. I No, I don't. But anyhow, he he had written many books uh, on the power of music, and so I had gone to one of his meditations. Went through the back. Door. I am so sorry. Do you mind pausing for one sure, second so ahead. I can take care of the poodle? Yes. Otherwise, it's going to be distracting. Okay, Please continue. Sorry about my poodle. Okay. Now we were talking about light and dark music. We're talking about the the what I think was one of the. It seems like one of you've had a, a few miracles in your life. Yeah, oh yes, and one of the, the, the guitar. guitar. And but before that, you were mentioning this guru, a music yes. guru. Who's a guru? Sri Chinmoy. And I remember going to one of his meditations, and I walked into the house, and the room was full of meditators, and he was sitting up in front in this trance, and I could just feel this etheric glow around his presence, and I could feel that the people there were there to get energy or just to be present. And something clicked to me. I says, I could come here to get something from this being, or I could send this being love and light. You know, why do I think that if you sit in the presence of a guru, you just have to receive? Why don't I dare to believe that I can offer this person something? Yeah. So I just sent waves of love and appreciation and sort of this open blanche card. Whatever you need from me, you can have, right? <laughs> yeah. And uh, I just dared to love the guru back you know and shortly after then another part of it i remember playing fender rose piano in a jazz rock band and at required loading this heavy cabinet and keyboard onto a van whenever the group played it was the group called winds of change okay and on one occasion i was traveling by train during that period subway train and looking over at somebody who had this neat little small case and i said to myself this wouldn't it be wonderful if there was a lightweight portable piano something that small <laughs> and uh so that's number two secondly i had this epiphany this sound hearing experience during that period of uh meditation hearing this cosmic orchestra now all those three together at some point while playing a guitar I felt like I didn't need the guitar at that moment because I was playing piano. So I wanted to pawn the guitar to get some extra cash there in South Ozone Park, Queens. So I went into the, uh, the pawn shop, and what caught my eye as I was going in was this instrument, the auto harp, loosely called the zither, that I had seen in the village, Greenwich Village of New York, when I was doing stand-up comedy. <laughs> Bluegrass... Uh, bands would include an auto harp and it would catch my eye and I said that's an interesting looking instrument that seemed like it has a bigger future fast forward back to this pawn shop I'm going into the pawn shop and I'm pawning my guitar my uh, Yamaha 6 still string guitar did you feel depressed pawning your guitar isn't that a depressing moment for a musician uh, at that time I was into meditation you know meditation takes the edge off a lot so Depression doesn't really get a hold of me after that happened, after getting into meditation the right way. And yoga. Yoga helps too, keeping your body uh, together. So anyhow, I did feel like I was living the life of the struggling musician, but it wasn't attended by a sense of depression. Thanks for asking that. uh, But anyhow... Well, I just asked because, you know, sometimes when when I've been in pawn shops... I feel a little afraid to buy the instruments because I think these instruments oh might have energy that they represent some potentially people. somebody who wanted to become a musician and didn't you know had to get some dough and gave up their dream for some cash and there's this feeling of like shit man that's heavy to get these instruments I'm glad you brought that up that's a wonderful Duncan a preface to what I'm about to say is that when I was pawning a guitar, I expect to come out with maybe $150, but the clerk only offered me $25. 
And right after that clerk made that statement, I said, oh, that doesn't sound like where I want to go. A very clear, distinctive voice washed through me as if a great cosmic grand parental. And all the warmth and love and advice counseling said, don't take money. Swap your guitar for that instrument in the window. And they knew I was the, the auto harp. So with the loving energy of that voice sort of nullified any negative energy that I thought that instrument could have had. It was suddenly, I'm curious to see where this can go. And how did that voice get inside my head? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but then, like I said, there was Sri Chin Moy. There was my putting it out to the cosmos and looking for a new instrument. And there was this hearing this cosmic music and not knowing how I was going to use that experience on this side of the veil. And suddenly, I'm being guided to explore this auto harp. So I took it home. I got $5 along with the deal. I made a little deal. Nice. Yeah. So I was still out of money, but I had this instrument, and I was excited because I was now running the energy of this cosmic guidance. That's, a, that's another thing about following cosmic guidance, is that the moment I choose to follow guidance, I'm in a different frequency of the universe. That's right. That is so miraculous. And, uh, so yeah, what, let's talk about that just for a second, this different frequency of the universe. It's, it, 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 it can literally seem as though you just stepped through a portal into yes. a completely different dimension. You're yes. no longer in the life you were in anymore right. the moment you make that choice. Yes, you, 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 you're validating the, the idea that there's a consciousness and intelligence working through you by means of you, individualizing as you, right here and right now. And when you have that expanded realization, you're walking in a different, all of a sudden, it's a different world. You shed your skin. It's you, you've 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 climbed out of whatever the nest was that you that you that I guess some invisible mother bird was trying to push you out of. Yes. And now you're like, whoa, wait a minute. I can. I think I'm flying here. This is. And during that time, Duncan, that's when you uh, start to appreciate kindred folks, the right community, friends who are. If they're real friends, they can allow you to expand. They can allow you to grow. They can allow you to shed your skin. And in the midst of your relationship, there is still that love and caring, even though you're you're in another <laughs> dimension. Yeah. Like your cat, your dogs. If you were to shift vibrations tremendously and go back to your poodles in, the, in another 20 minutes, they would still probably lick your hand. And <laughs> they don't care. <laughs> The poodles don't care if I'm Jesus or if I'm a stockbroker. They don't care. They, you're right. That's a true friend. That's mm -hmm. a true friend. Because some friends who aren't really friends, when you start making the upshift, they'll, they'll make it, you could call them on their position. They, right. They feel unstable in their own life. And to, where are you going? That's too far out. I can't follow you there. That's right. And others says, can be validated. They're searching for some kind of relief and they said, hey, I never thought of just jumping out of this frequency into another one. And uh, of course, jumping out it might not be the right way to put it. You want to uh, flow out of it or sure. gracefully. There's all kinds of ways you can come out of it. You know, Ram Dass talks about this a little bit. Some people, uh, what happens is they, they jump out of it and, and they go really far into a higher frequency and they're, maybe they weren't quite ready for it or there was a, you know, forget the friends who are like, what's going on with you, space cowboy? Where are you at? <laughs> forget those friends. Think about the part of the ego identity that the moment you're standing in a music shop hearing the voice of the universe yes. telling you, hey, here's a way for you to move into a completely new incarnation while you're still alive, there's a part of you, maybe not you, but there's a part of me that'd be like, uh-oh, one toke over the line, baby. <laughs> Here we go. I knew I shouldn't have been taking that. I took one too many hits of acid. I'm losing it. I'm hearing a voice telling me to buy a zither. I must be spot. I'm going to be in a fucking lunatic asylum soon. That part of the identity. We have those little shitty friends living inside of us who are like, no, stay here. Stay like this. Yes, stay where it's safe, stay where you're recognizable, stay where it's convenient. 
stay did where you, it's boring. Boring. <laughs> it was so boring. Did you did you have any sense as when you're hearing this voice that maybe it what that something, no, something to worry about? No, at that time, about? one thing I also uh, I took it as it was part of my practice at that time. It's called New Thought. New Thought Religion was one of the things I was dabbling in. And uh, the suggestion is to try something new on a daily basis. If you if you go home from work a certain way, try a new way. Mm. If you walk to the library a certain path, try another path. Yeah. If you put your clothes on a certain way, try another way. In other words, constantly break out of patterns. This is called new thought? New thought religion. If you can think a new thought, you can change your life. Wow. And so here was a new, powerful new thought. Me? Play the auto art. And I said, wow, how challenging. How, but most of all, me follow this voice. I wanted to see where this would go. And uh, because that, to me, was like Robert Frost's poem, The Road Not Taken. Yeah. This is a path I would not take with my rational thinking mind. Okay, but let me blow your mind for a second. Not blow your mind, but let me... That poem, do you know that poem is one of the most mis... That poem, actually... Because everyone thinks this means the road not taken means you that you picked a road not taken. But if you look at that poem, both of the roads looked exactly the same. Mm. And it's in retrospect that the character in the poem is thinking, I took the road less traveled, traveled by. by. But both of them were exactly the same. But in the his mind, he picked the road. But it's a sort of the... I guess what it implies is it's more of the subjective decision mm -hmm. that elevates rather than you could have picked either of these paths but your mind would is the thing that produces the sense of like oh it actually sounds a little dismal as i'm describing it that way but the point is you this new th i want to talk about this very quickly this new thought that mm -hmm. you're talking about coincides with an idea i've been having about incarnational cycles which is that we live this life over and over and over and over again. We don't reincarnate necessarily as birds or buffalo or eagle or whatever. We, 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 this life is on loop. And um, the feeling of habit is the feeling of the tracks that we've created in all these uh -huh. past incarnational cycles. So by doing new things each day, you're sort of pushing yourself out of this deep track that you've burrowed into the yeah. time-space continuum. And that thing you're talking about, buying the zither, it, that, and that sense of, oh, this is a new universe, it's because it, it is. You're cycling up. Out Spiraling of, up spir instead of cycling. Yeah, yes. Samsara is another way of birth and death or just keeping a cycle, a, what do you call it, a, a locked cycle? Yes. And uh, to lift up out of it, Choosing new things, choosing new ways, or hearing. You can, you can hear sound that can unlock memory of a, a higher destination, a higher form of selfness. They'd, um, what do you call it, spiritual music? Or you call it nodam, inner sound current, which uh, can unlock your memory that you are a cosmos, that you are not limited just this incarnation you can you have mm. a body you can use a body but you're not limited to the body uh, but we're picking this body uh, it's attachment isn't it it's like I this would say it's, we've done something to to allow this particular incarnation to be ours but i can see why you would pick your incarnation why wouldn't you like if i was the universal consciousness i would want to be you that's a fun incarnation to pick i yeah you know you're you're do you ever, you, this thing you're talking about, we must let go of the titles, but then not just the titles, we let go of the it, everything, and, and we let go of everything. Now, in the context that we can let go of it in the 10 minutes before dropping into the meditation, when we come out of the meditation, we, we want to go forward, I'm going to say back forward, into our worldly obligations and responsibilities. I mean, you go back to your husband and you says, I'm not a wife. And he says, what do you mean, lady? <laughs> 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 but you carry the resonance of behind the wife, behind the husband, behind the civil engineer, there's this undesignated pure I am. Mm. But let's talk about something crazy. 
You know the story of the Rasalila? Krishna playing the flute and oh, the goat. Krish- yeah. And the, so like the story of the Rasalila, uh, if you're not familiar, very quickly, Krishna goes into a clearing in the forest and plays the flute yeah. at night. And the music washes in through the forest and the gopi, the, the cowherd women, hear the flute, yes. the music of God. Yes. And they leave their children. They leave the lanterns burning. They leave their husbands. They leave everything. And they go to follow that music until they come to the clearing and there's Krishna playing the flute and there's 108 of them. And he splits himself. He becomes 108 Krishnas Mm -hmm. so that he can make love to all of them as their perfect lover. So Yes. But they've left everything, you know. They've said that the music was so so absorbing to them that they weren't. They didn't think, "Oh, you're my husband." They didn't. They were like, "No." Therefore, they didn't leave anything. They gained everything. <laughs> 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 yes. And in the realization that you didn't leave anything because there's nothing left behind. It, yeah. um, that is Krishna's flute is a metaphor for the inner sound current. Yeah. And it's a perfect lover because it's all permeating. It connects you to your whole self. It's more than you say a, a private lover can do. You can connect to your sensual body with a with a sensual lover, connect to your breath, you can feel good. Yeah. But uh, Krishna's flute or that knot in the sound current connect you to your cosmic presence. That that when a lover can do that. Yo, <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> and you say making love to all eight of them. The, 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 108. 108. The sound vibration is everywhere. So like holographically, mm. the wholeness of the feel is at every point within the feel. You can connect the wholeness of the feel at every point within the feel. And so at every one, every one of the 108, there was the wholeness of Krishna. There's the wholeness. And as you make total presence, total love, total nurturing, total validation. So the idea is that not leave, they didn't leave something behind. That's a metaphor. What they did, they moved the head into everything. And in a sense, you left, you, you could call it an illusion, but that can anger some people, that you call it an illusion. Yes. A temporary sense of reality. Yeah. Yeah. And do you, do you feel like you're, not to force you to categorize yourself, but do you feel like you're you're a teacher or that you have it seems like you're teaching us through the sounds that you're producing um in the sense of modeling that I am opening myself up to continuously validating and learning who what I am and am not and sharing my learning space sharing mm. my learning space I'm little concerned about taking on students in the formal sense, especially followers. I feel like in following, I'd like to have the, the uh, freedom to back up without stepping on anybody. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. That is so cool. That is so, that's all any of us want. That's the most beautiful thing to want. Yes. Yeah. But in, uh, I allow my music, the music that I've done, has modeled to musicians that I've heard from around the world who have been inspired enough to go along the direction they've already been going on with more conviction and more zest. Or I've uh, given people the, uh, the ability to, to think over, hey, maybe I should just keep that meditation a little longer until I make more sense of it. I imagine there are many people who are trying to meditate and haven't found their connection to it. And I have a feeling that the music that I do or my lifestyle may support them and say, oh, I'll give it another try yes. or I'll go a little deeper. For sure. Uh-huh. That's the sense when I listen to your music. That's what it, it feels like to me. It, it puts me in that something, I don't know what you would call it, something unique. Well, it's unique to your music. I, it, it, do you think that music, do you think music is alive? That is a good question. I 
have this sense that music and light are vertical forms that are conscious being. Now, it's not easy to wrap my linear thinking around that idea that a sound can be a conscious being. But a sound can impart wisdom, it can lift heaviness, it can open consciousness, and it can do it in a way that isn't filled with human drama or human demands. I have the sensation that uh, sound and light are conscious beings. I mean, you may call it the angelic realm, that, uh, and that they exist probably as continuous present time that can somehow mm. impact the movement of consciousness on this side of the veil. Mm. I have this sensation, yes, that sound is a living being. You think of, when I play the gong, the idea is to invoke the gong, the beings who work through the gong, to come through and impact us in positive ways. Disintegrate energy and to lift consciousness into a higher sense of present time. Mm. Thank you so much for hanging out with me for this time. Duncan, it's been an ecstatically infinite pleasure. <laughs> Likewise, thank you. How can people find you? There's a website that I try to stay on top of. It's called laraji.blogspot.com. L-A-R-A-A-J-I at yahoo.com. And on that website, there's my my uh, email address there's descriptions of the laughter workshop that i do and uh, hopefully updated schedule of my concerts and uh, ways to contact me and a little bit of information of the things that i'm up to and I, I if this is too much to ask i completely get it but we you have this instrument here yeah. and i was wondering if maybe for the next five minutes or so yes. you could play a little something for everybody let's see i can hold the mic and interesting, you say the way you just said to play it for everybody. In Africa tradition, this instrument is played to acknowledge ancestral energy. Ah. So you're playing for the ancestors. So when I play the instrument, especially in any in music, I am mindful of beings who are not totally in the hard, fast human body, but the energy. So I'll hold this. Everybody and beyond bodies. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. All 
of a sudden, it's a different view. All of a sudden, it's another you. All of a sudden, it's another state of mind flowing. Way of knowing, higher way of glowing. so beautiful thank you um, I forgot that February the, January the 18th is a release of a new song album highly inspirational called Vision Songs Volume 1 released by Numero Group it's probably already being uh, promoted around the beautiful planet Vision Songs Volume 1 with Laraji produced on Numero Group Records I'll have links to that at DuncanTrussell.com thank you so Om much Shanti. Hare Krishna. Thanks for listening, everybody. That was Laraji. All the links you need to find Laraji will be at DuncanTrussell.com. Huge thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this episode of the DTFH. And thank you guys so much for listening. Hope you continue to make beautiful music in whatever it is you do. I'll see you guys soon with an episode.